Trans women are women. What are your thoughts? Trans women are trans women. That's not said disrespectfully because right. my era, we were transvestites, mm. drag queens, mm -hmm. you a man in a dress. Mm. We fought to have the title of trans women. Respectfully, yeah. trans men are trans men. Mm. That is not even a disrespect. It's this younger, new generation, Z crazy, that it's not enough for. Mm. But let me just break something down to y'all real simple. Uh, if a woman is a social construct and we're emulating women, what would that make us? Welcome back to At Liminal Period. It's your girl, Chun Li Shadi. Flame Monroe is a transgender comedian that some might say is a little controversial. Based on the intro clip that I've shared with you guys, I don't really think that there's any hot takes that she has. I actually think that's pretty base. However, if you are a part of a marginalized community and you don't subscribe to their same ideology, then you are a sellout. It is controversial. You are a pick me, whatever you want to call it. So I was actually interested in seeing how Clay Monroe thinks outside of just her comedy. And so I actually found an interview that Don Lemon had with her from about three weeks ago. And it was actually an interesting conversation. I'm going to be sharing some of the highlights of the conversation, or at least the parts that I find relevant to the conversations that we've been having on this channel. But at the end of the day, it's all interconnected. So if you have the time, do take a listen. Ben. Do you think I, that I'm transphobic just by saying that I have questions about transgender issues and, and et cetera? Absolutely not. Don. Here's, the, here's the thing. I've been a trans woman for 37 years. I still have questions about the new terminology in the trans community. I'm still mis a little confused about certain terms. So I understand that and living in and being a part of the community for us to say that we don't understand. Imagine what it's like for somebody who's not a part of the community to hear the words non-binary or gender non-conforming and nobody explains that to them because then they don't know. The problem is we want instant gratification in the community. We want it to happen overnight. I'm old school. It doesn't happen overnight. I know the microwave is new. I grew up boiling it in a pot. We had to warm up food in a pot. I know it's an old analogy, but it's still the truth. They wanted instant gratification. It doesn't work that way. You, it takes time. The same way it takes a person who's transgendered to come out to their family and friends and say, hey, I identify as this. Please call me this name. It took you years to build up the courage and the, the energy to tell them that. But we don't want to allow them time to adjust themselves to say, okay, I get it. So if they have a slip of the tongue and call you the wrong pronoun or the wrong gender, you didn't give them time just like they gave you time. You just wanted to happen overnight. This is the, the monster that we are facing with the youth. And it's the youth to me because the older trans and gay people actually understand how regular, how life works. I'm not going to say regular life because life changes all the time, but there is no patience in the youth. There is no patience done. Well, I, listen, I know my trans friends would say, look, we're tired of waiting. We're tired of being misunderstood. And if, if not now, when? Do you know, you, do you know what I mean? Because I absolutely in, in many, And in many ways, their lives are in danger because people are attacking transgender um, women and men all the time. Well, well, let me, let me say this and let me say this fairly. Everybody is under attack right now. We're living in a crazy country right now with racism. We, the world is in wars. Everybody is under attack. Jews, blacks, gays, uh, Latinos, everyone is under attack. Now, do we get more uh, um, backlash as being a trans person? Sometimes, yes. I'm not going to say that. But sometimes, sometimes, and please y'all don't take this wrong, but y'all take what I say wrong anyway. Sometimes we put ourselves in precarious positions when we know better. Sometimes that's what we do. Not only as trans people, but as black people. You know, if you can't go to a certain part of Georgia after 6 p.m. in the evening that you wouldn't go there. So why would you do that if you're a trans person and you know, hey, this if this area does not really like us. I'm not going to put myself in a position to where something can cause me bodily harm. There are certain people within the trans community that want to speed up the process of acceptance. Right. You know, like I was talking about in the video from yesterday regarding lady boys versus the transgender community within America. Right. There is a completely different culture, not just within the community, but also the culture within that nation. Right. So we already have that dysfunctional relationship here in America. Honestly, all uh, i'm not gonna say all of it but there's a lot of questionable things within our culture right now 
and there are some questionable things within the trans culture so we can't just force the acceptance because there's a lot of kinks that we still need to iron out and to the second point that she was making yes there might be some people that are bigots or discriminate against you for whatever reason however there are certain people within marginalized community or in that fringe community that also put themselves into precarious situations how many videos have you guys come across on social media where there's a trans woman saying that she is not going to tell the sexual partners that she have that she's a man that she's a biological male um, I've like fully had sex with people and like just not even told them they just like don't know when guys get upset when they find out you're trans it's honestly based off their own insecurities of like oh I find so and so attractive oh she used to be a boy oh my god if you're attracted to me if you literally just had sex with me it doesn't matter like who I was born as like I'm not that person anymore that is a precarious situation because you don't know how that guy's gonna get down and you might get your ass whooped and that's not always the case some people just have issues with who you are but a lot of times those are the things that you know what part did you play what part a lot I mean, of times it's it really 2024 though I, I want to get to this biological woman thing because there is an issue and, and my straight w women friends will tell me I don't want to be uh, a people who birth or whatever it is, or you know, instead of saying a pregnant woman, uh, I'm a, a, a not a pregnant woman or a person who gives birth. I forget it was what it's a called. birther. A, they're like, no, no, not a birther. But when when you write it in a news article, it's like um, a birthing person or something like that. They're like, no, I'm a woman, and I, I understand if a transgender person is offended by me saying that, but they can't have kids. Don't call me a person who, who births. I am a woman. I am a pregnant woman so don't try to take that away from me don't call so me I, a this chest whole issue eater about um about you know you said a biological woman yes do you feel like you that i don't know how to answer how to ask this question do you feel this that, is me that, ask me it's me it's do me do you feel that you are equal to a biological woman are there Absolutely. A distinction? like Absolutely. why 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 was that so hard why was that so hard for you to ask don flame monroe has three biological children that he fathers and he calls himself the father to his babies. Okay, so this is not me misgendering or anything. So John, you say you guys are friends. Like, why was that so hard to ask? Because I'm going to tell you guys why. He's afraid to ask that because, again, you're not just talking to Flay Monroe. You're talking to someone, a part of the trans community. And so there are going to be a lot of people that internalize this conversation. And depending on whether or not they agree with Flame or not, or with Donna or not, they're going to take offense to how he words his question. And that's the sick part of it all. I am a trans woman, which makes me super special. Mm -hmm. Don Lemon, if you were a straight man, you could walk down the street and you could see a, 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 a biological woman more beautiful than me with a vagina can have your kids, marry you, do a, every, every, every five seconds. Trans women are like diamonds spread out you got to seek and find because they're special but a lot of trans women don't know that they're special they don't know that they're diamonds they need validation from somebody to tell them oh i'm a woman i'm as much woman as her i'm more special than her because i'm a special woman that's not discrediting who she is but i see who i am i i own who i am that is the problem we don't own ourselves when i'm in this girl right now i own this girl when i'm standing on business and i mean standing in it i own that player because i own me that so, is well, the I problem we need I, validation i get that so what is wrong I tr like, and i truly want to know this because you're a what is wrong with being a just saying i'm a trans woman I'm not a biological woman. I'm a trans woman. Is there? I don't. That is the younger no generation. Me, done. I, trans, my generation so... fought to be called trans women. We we thought we I, we take that word respectfully because a, a is self explanatory. So if I met you and you didn't know, and I've never been a passable trans girl, but if I met you and you didn't know, and I said, "How you doing?" You say, "My name is Don." I say, "Oh, my name is Flame. I'm a trans woman." You automatically know this is this per this type of person. And if I want to go any further, I can go any further. Or I have given you the choice to say. Oh, you, you're nice looking. Thank you so much. That's not for me. That's not my get down. And you move on. Simple. A lot of a lot of girls don't want that. They want to be. And I get that they don't want to out themselves, especially when you're a really passable trader. If you don't know where the relationship is going or you have to read the room, like we said earlier, you meet a guy and you tell him you trans and he jap out because he's angry at himself for being attracted to you because he did not know that you were not a biological woman. So that happens, too. 
So I understand, but a lot of girls play the game of not all, but a lot of girls play the game of I'm not going to tell them until this time to do to do. Yeah, that that you might have went a little too far. You think absolutely so? too far? Absolutely. What do you mean you think so? I told you already. I I would low key consider that grape. Yeah. Well, you have. I have to give you the choice, Don. We live in America. Absolutely, America's you got to give each other that choice. respect. I'm gi giving someone the choice to say yes or no is literally just showing that respect and courtesy because you would want to have that choice, right? My body, my choice. I mean, I'm not well, actually no, actually bad context because no, in that case, no, because it's not your body, it's you in the baby's body, okay? But yeah, no. <laughs> you the choice if you want to play or if you don't want to play. Nine times out of ten, I ain't going to even front. Most men play. But there is that one or that two out of that ten that will be like, you know what? It's just not for me. You can't get angry and say that they're transphobic. That is just not for them. You know, Don, here's a here's a here's an old school analogy. I like potatoes, corn, and peas. Sometimes I like the potatoes with the peas. Sometimes I like the potatoes with the corn. Sometimes I like all three on the same fork. And sometimes I want them separately. I have a choice. Sometimes we remove the choice from people. You can't remove the choice. Oof. That's a lot. He didn't like I'm that. Gonna, we're going to be in trouble. A, a conservative podcast recently, just last week, or and it, it just it just came out a couple of days ago, and they asked me about trans women in sports. Now, look, I, I think it's such a small issue. There's so few that I'm shocked that it's become this huge thing. But where do you fall on trans um, women in sports? You think it's a it's a, it's a it's an advantage if you're born a biological man? to compete in women's sports? I think it does a great disservice to the trans, the great trans athletes that we have because they'll never know how great they are because there's not an arena to let them know how great they are. You weren't the best male athlete, so you, you identify as trans and then you go to the females team. You can't be the best female simply because your chromosomes don't allow you to be female. So why would not, La Laverne Cox it created a lane for Laverne Cox. She damn sure didn't get on Time Magazine for her acting and damn sure not that singing let me just be honest but because she created her own lane she is that laverne cox t.s madison created her own lane on the internet which is why she is t.s madison there is no competition flame monroe is the only transgender comedian or the only comedian of trans experience that works mainstream because i created my own lane so i know how good i am against somebody that's just like me you'll never know that because they've never been afforded that opportunity look at eunice shriver there she has special needs kids Kids and no place for them to compete. They created the, the Special Needs Olympic in 68 in her backyard with six or seven kids. Don is worldwide now. That's what we want, instant gratification. The world doesn't work that way. And again, to be celebrated and not tolerated. Look at the young trans girl who ran last week in Oregon and won over all the other, the sophomore in high school. And they booed her and sneered her and called her wretched names at 15. I'm 50. I've never been booed, but I can only imagine how that feels. And at 15, when you're just finding your identity, just coming into your own to be booed by an arena full of people, imagine what that would do to this child's ego. Now, now, what if this child kill herself? I'm, 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 this is just a scenario. Who are they going to blame? Who, who are they, they going to blame the people that boo her or blame the people who did not create a lane for her to have a safe space, to feel celebrated, to feel loved, and to feel like a champion? So I'm not saying I agree with everything that Flame Monroe has to say. I'm, I, I don't agree with anybody on everything, okay? But I for sure appreciate her perspective. And I'm going to say it like this. I don't think that she actually has a toxic or exploitative mindset towards the trans identity or the trans community. And what I mean by that is there are plenty of people that see that it's an opportunity for them to garner additional attention. So when you have a sincere interest in actually trying to come to a solution or a resolution, I think it would be super helpful if Candace Owens was to be able to sit down with Flame Monroe and have the conversation, right? She's been dabbling into the conversations that are happening within black twitter space being able to actually come together because of our ideas and our values and not just feel like we have to be divided and separated based on politics so flame flame are you saying there should be a 
there should be a special category for trans women in sports uh, and they should not be competing. And men, not just trans women, and trans men. Trans women and men, yeah. So it shouldn't, they should not be, trans people should not be competing with um, heterosexual men or, heter- or, or biological men or biological women. Don, you froze. I'm not gonna say heterosexual. There, there are gay athletes. There are gay men and gay women. But they're why, biology. Why did he get that mixed right. up? Yeah, I, no, I don't. I, I think that, that we should have. I meant biological men and women, not heterosexual. I hope yes. that's what yes. you yes. meant, because yes. some people do conflate your gender with your orientation. And again, like that's like I don't understand why the trans umbrella is even under the LGBT or the LGB spectrum. Right. Because being a lesbian, being bisexual, being gay, that's all a sexual orientation. Being trans is almost completely opposite of that. It's almost oxymoronic. People within the gay community say that they're born that way. Right. Like that's what they were fighting for. That was their anthem. Lady Gaga, I was born this way. And now with the trans community, it's completely opposite. Nope. I was born in the wrong body. So anyways, uh, like maybe like later on, I'll do another conversation because <laughs> it's actually really funny, but lesbians happen to be some of the biggest opponents of trans women. And it's because again, you identifying as a trans woman does not make me a natural born woman who is a lesbian any more attracted to you. Yeah, I, I think that it would call it would show fairness. It would show include. That's the word that we love to holler, inclusion. This whole drag queen story hour thing, do you think it's appropriate for kids to have drag queens in their class when they're in nursery school, first grade, kindergarten? Oh, Don, you're trying to get me in trouble. Let me let me say how I feel about this for, as a trans person. I have a, and a parent because I'm coming at this from two angles. I'm a trans person, but I'm also a parent. And, th- and three, I'm also an entertainer. I think it's the responsibility of the entertainer to say, hey, it's kids in here. If I'm going to do dressed up like Mrs. Doubtfire or Barney or or a cartoon character that they're very familiar with, with all my clothes pulled up. I think that's pretty, I think it's safe, especially with the parents there. But if some of these drag queens that do these drag queen story times say, oh, I'm going to dress like Beyonce with your ass out and your fake titty breast out and woo, woo, woo. Beyonce has three children. I don't know Beyonce, but I've met her mom, Miss Tina, lovely woman. I can guarantee you Beyonce don't sit there with her ass out reading stories to her own children. You have to read the room. There is a responsibility on all levels with this, Don. I, I agree with it in some capacities because I think it will help to teach the children that there are different people in the world, different lifestyles. But I think as far as the performer and the person who books the performer, hey, cover yourself up. Look like a Mormon. Look like a nun. Whatever it is, you're here to tell a story. You're not here to be the damn story. That part. You're here to tell the story. You're not here to be the damn story. And I think like that's a big part of the problem that people from the outside have with the trans community and that people in the trans community seem to want to be the center of attention or want the focus all on them. They want everyone to coddle them, to kowtow down to them. And that's just not the way the world works, right? So going back to story time with drag queens or drag queen story time, whichever it is, I think it is really dependent. What is the situation? Like, is it like a school where... Hey, on a weekly, every other week, monthly basis, we're bringing in different people within the community. Perhaps one day we bring in a firefighter. Another day we bring in a garbage man, kind of like, you know, career day and a day we bring in drag queens. So then, you know, like through experiencing all sorts of different people with different walks of life, you're introduced to the trans identity. However, I think the issue is there are a lot of schools that are undermining parents. There are a lot of schools that are starting to bring in story time with drag queens and having a part of their regular scheduled programming. You're starting to introduce kids to these ideas too early and too often. There's nothing wrong with understanding and knowing that there are drag queens within society. However, again, you're kind of low-key grooming them to become this. Because um, you know they're gonna be mad. I don't know. Look, I don't. Have I kids, get mad but back. Even, <laughs> even was, but even if the you know, well, if the Rockets came to your school, you know, that would be a different thing. But if you know, some sort of Vegasy 
sort of show came to, I don't know if I would want them performing in front of my kids. And when they're well, and as a exactly, parent, and that that's, is- and that's up to you as the parent. That's exactly what Flame is saying. It's up to you as a parent to provide consent on whether or not you want your child to participate in school that day. Your option to say, Hey, I'm not comfortable with that. My kid is mm-hmm. not coming to school that day. My kid, does, I don't want my kid. And this is, the, this is where you as a parent have the, lo- the right to say no. And if somebody right- says, well, I don't think that's what you're doing. You should have the right and the responsibility. You should have the right to be able to say, no, I'm not comfortable with that. But you're also responsible to know what is going on within the syllabus and the curriculum of your child. A part of the issue is that parents don't realize that this is happening within the classrooms. They don't realize that their kids are being introduced to these ideologies, to different pronouns, to different genders from early ages like kindergarten and first grade, not only through the school curriculum, but also through having all of the, these weird ass teachers coming into the classroom, wanting the attention and the main focus to be on them. Right to your child. You should let little Billy see. You don't tell me how to raise my kid. That that is parents not parenting. That's the first thing. You don't tell me how to raise my kid. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, drag queens they ain't trying to hurt nobody. Well, they're not, and I I love, love what RuPaul has done to open the world of drag. Open up drag to the world, to the world. I'm, I'm just with when it comes out kids so dying, and that's probably because I'm a parent. Because before I became a parent, I would be in the grocery store cussing or on the bus cussing or whatever. And somebody said, Oh, girl, don't do that. It's kids in here. I'm sure I probably said, I don't give a damn they ain't my kids. But after I became a parent, I learned the responsibility of what it meant to be a parent, not only to my children, but to my children's friends. There is a responsibility that comes with everything in your life. Flame, let me ask you this. Uh, because I think that the right seizes upon these opportunities when there is a sort of division, right? And it, and and also, as I said, the low-hanging fu- fruit, it's the easiest sort of trans people are the easiest people to sort of discriminate against, to make fun of, to make a political issue out of, right? Yeah. So um, why do you think, like, maybe that's the reason that, that trans people have been, become such a political cudgel for the right? Well, if in, anything that's going to help them to get what they want, and what they want is him back in office. But I'm riding with Biden, and I, but he just ain't driving. He gonna sit in the back seat. I drive the car. <laughs> you know what? And 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 it, and it, it seems to be working for them, Don Lemon. It does. And I wish that we would step outside of ourselves as a community, LGBTQIA, to see that Biden hears us. He always acknowledges the LGBT community in every speech. He never, uh, never not addresses us. He always makes it fair. But when Trump got in office in 2016, day one, he took down the website off the off the, of the White House page for the LGBT community. If he's already said that if he gets in office day one, he was going to uh, no more protection for trans youth. That is the dog whistle, not to say for trans youth. That is for all trans. But we don't hear that because we so caught up in the distraction of pronouns and bathroom rights and how do I identify? You know how you identify? You know better than anybody else and you as an individual. The reason why I said I was surprised at this conversation, it's not just because, oh, I'm biased. Like we all know, right? Like I know Don Lamont says that he's a centrist. Most people would consider him left-leaning or progressive. And based on the way that Flame Monroe was speaking about transgender and biology and facts and understanding all of, like these differences, you would have thought that perhaps maybe she was right-leaning or conservative. There are a lot of people within the trans community that actually consider Flame Monroe right-leaning or at least pandering to the right. It's crazy to me that even though we can agree on a lot of things, and I'm not saying, again, when I say agree, I don't necessarily mean as in like, I'm going to live that way, but agree as in like, hey, like these are safe and healthy boundaries, okay? Like we can agree to disagree on a lot of things, but for some reason, a lot of people are so blinded by their main focus, by their main priority, and it's pretty obvious that for both of them, it's going to be black and gay. And it's stereotyped that most black and gay people are voting Democrat. 
And that's just the way that it's been. And it's because people aren't pushing back on the ideologies or the policies that these politicians are actually going to put into place. And I don't want to make this a political conversation, but I don't think that there's anyone on the right or any conservatives that are really just anti-gay, anti-transgender people. No, what we are against is we're against you whooping our ass. We're against men with full grown beards entering into a women bathroom. We're against forced speech. We're against you lying about it. You know, I mean, it's pretty basic. But outside of that, I really don't care who you sleep with. I don't care who you marry. I don't. I'm sorry. These videos are is to show you that we can agree to disagree. Anyways, I've enjoyed this conversation and I hope you guys did too. And I look forward to speaking again with you guys next time. Bye.